Hello everyone, happy Wednesday evening to you. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna be talking about dealing with depressing thoughts tonight, followed by communion. So glad to have you on board. And uh, we'll be welcoming some people here in a moment. And for those of you who will be viewing this later, you may wanna fast forward a couple, three minutes. Uh, and we'll be starting our teaching. Mickey should be joining me in just a few moments. She is uh, downstairs with the grands right now, but she'll come be coming up in just a, just a little bit. But uh, hello, and I hope you've had a great day today. This weather has just been incredible. Um, I've been outside several times today, seen a lot of deer and seen bunches of geese <laughs> next door. Our neighbor has a couple of ponds and lots of geese. So I hear them honking and uh, I've seen a lot of little bitty uh, baby deer this year running around in our yard. Hello, Deborah. Good evening. Hey, Mike and Vicki. Folks are coming on board now. Thank you. We're going to be talking about dealing with depressing thoughts in just a little bit. And uh, maybe that's something no, none of you are having to deal with. Uh, that'd be great. But I imagine there'll be a few folks that'll watch this. That'll, it'll be an encouragement to them. So I appreciate you coming uh, on board and online tonight. And uh, we had a great time this morning talking about cultivating a kingdom heart. And you can view that teaching um, down below on our page. Hey, Brittany. And uh, Doc, bless you. Doc Wally, yes. And Mike and Teresa, so good to see you. Blessings. And again, congratulations on being great grand uh, papa, nana, whatever you may go by, but got that uh, great grandbaby. How wonderful that is. And just so happy to see all of you and um, glad that you would uh, join with us tonight. I hope that you're having a good week. We'll be looking at a scripture in the book of Proverbs tonight. Hey, Pam, up around Waynesboro, God bless you for all you guys are doing. So appreciate you. Hey, Anna, uh, bless you and Jason. And I know you're going to be having an addition to your family. You're going to be able to see for the first time uh, in, in a week or less, I understand. So we love you guys. Hey, honey. Hey. I uh, told them you were coming, that you were having to do say? some Nana business. <laughs> nana business. Yeah, That's just saying stuff. hello to a few folks, and then we're going to be talking about dealing with depressing thoughts. And uh, so hopefully that'll be a blessing to some folks tonight. Hey, Sandra, bless you and Russell. I hope you guys are doing well today. Gorgeous day, isn't it? It's been lovely. So yeah. nice this week. Oh, wait. Tell them I've been hearing the geese honk every time I go outside today and move our water sprinklers. Yeah. Yep. They're loud. <laughs> move that a little bit so you can be Get fully in the picture. picture. Yeah. There we go. Hey, Paula. Blessings to you, too. We are so grateful that you would take this time to be with us on Wednesday and uh, such a blessing to see you. Hey, Ricky. Blessings to you. We want to remember to pray for those who are battling uh, COVID. I know we know a number of people personally and a number of families that are, are struggling. And uh, um, we just pray for them tonight. Hey, Kristen, bless you and Matt. Um, pray for all of our medical workers because in our area, they're really having to, to uh, got a lot going on, a lot to handle. So we just speak blessings and strength and peace over every one of them. Hey, Peggy. Good to see you guys on here tonight, and uh, had a lot of folks on this morning, so we've had a good week over the hump day and headed into the end portion of the week. So we are excited about the study tonight and um, dealing with depressing thoughts. And yes. Are we ready to dive into that? Yeah, I'm ready. Why don't we just do that? And let's do well, Let's it. pray first of all. Father, we thank you for the power of your word. And we just invite the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. And uh, we thank you for those that are viewing with us uh, at this moment. And we just pray your blessings over them. And Lord, I pray that this would be a profitable, fruitful, and encouraging time for us all. In your word, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And we'll be um, participating in communion together after we share a little bit. Uh, out of Proverbs 12, verse 25, uh, love this Proverbs. Very simply, the, the writer states, Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. 
Isn't that powerful but simple? Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, Mm -hmm. but a good word makes it glad. So right off the bat, we (laughs) see the scripture gives us at least one of the causes for depression. I know there can be veritable causes, but certainly one of them is anxiety. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... Anxious thoughts. Yes. And particularly right now, there's a lot of anxiousness and a lot of worrying that's going on in our culture. Absolutely. A lot of unsure... um, unsurety and insecurity and what's going on in the world and so if you don't guard over your mind then those thoughts can make you very anxious and which can lead to depression yes and uh and that can affect your physical health mm-hmm. certainly your mental and emotional health and it, it can also affect your spiritual health uh, and we are called as believers to live spiritual lives, to be spiritually directed. As many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. And so anything that uh, begins to be an encumbrance to us or distraction or, or dilutes our focus on the Lord, uh, we need to deal with it. And certainly anxiety is one of those things. And in the natural, there are a lot of causes for anxiety right now. As you mentioned, there's a lot of mm-hmm. uncertainty. Um, there's issues with job security uh there's issues with uh health you know and Mm well-being um uh you know a lot of uh, fear and uh, usually fear uh, fear is uh uh, first cousin with anxiety for Mm -hmm. sure you know a lot of our anxiety is rooted in our fears you know what's going to happen uh you know, what about my kids? Are we going to go back to school or not? Mm-hmm. What about the job? Are we going to go back to work or not? What about church? Are we, you know, when are we going to get back inside? And mm-hmm. uh, Lord, where are you? You know, I can't hang out with my friends like I used to. And on and on, on the list goes. And you can get pulled into that swirl of thinking and go down, down, down. And so we just want to share some simple, practical uh, things uh, about dealing with depressing thoughts. And so the first thing um, that we want to share is just simply this. Realize that you have the power of choice. God made us with the power of choice. Adam and Eve were perfect, but still God designed them and created them with the ability to make choices. And of course, the one wrong choice uh, caused us to have to grow up with a fallen nature, you know, Uh, But you do have the power of choice. And I'm talking about you can choose what you're going to think about. There can be a lot of warfare against the mind where thoughts are coming Mm -hmm. at you. Mm -hmm. But you can choose what you're going to dwell on. Just like you choose the house you dwell in, you can choose the thoughts you dwell on. Yeah. Um, Joyce Meyer says, think about what you think about. Yes. um, I like that. Uh, So if you choose to dwell on worrisome thoughts or anxious thoughts, then other scriptures kick in. As a man thinks in his heart, mm-hmm. so is he. So if you, you are constantly thinking negative thoughts, uh, anxious thoughts, fearful thoughts, then as you meditate, we talked about meditation a couple of weeks mm-hmm. ago, you know, you meditate on that, whatever you think begins to form who you are. Mm-hmm. And so anxiety uh, will produce a, a fearful, uh, worrying, uh, negative-minded uh, person. Yes, it's destructive. Destructive thoughts. Uh huh. Absolutely. So you have to uh, examine what you're thinking about, and you know maybe ask some questions about what thoughts are just uh, bombarding me, or kind of sticking to my brain, or coming over and over again. And there's usually a theme to those kind of thoughts that. You know, is one kind of one or two things that are really bringing on that anxiety. So, finding out exactly what it is that you're afraid of actually helps, because then you can face into it and you can replace it with what's true. And mm-hmm. uh, and we human to attack it. we human beings, God so designed us that our mental faculties are extremely powerful. Uh, you can think and imagine, come up with creative, innovative ideas Mm -hmm. as part of God's image operating in us. 
but the enemy wants to put a saddle on that and ride it in the wrong direction. And the things that could be life-giving and creative and prolific and fruitful and benevolent and love-filled and courageous, he wants to take those and distort them and bend your mind toward evil, bend your mind toward gloom, doom, negative, bad, mm-hmm. uh, fear, make me feel insecure, feel threatened. Uh, that causes me to have to react and be defensive. Uh, it can take, you know, a, a, if he can, he can use these anxi- anxious thoughts and like a horse is guided by reins, he can use those anxious thoughts to guide us away from the will of God for our lives. And we, but we need to realize that and we realize we choose to allow him to do that. And the, but the thing about it, when you make wrong choices, uh, one after the other after the other over time, you make choices and then the choices make you. And, and really, what does bondage mean? But you have willed yourself wrongfully into a place that it's uh, it, now you need help getting out of there, mm-hmm. you know. And so it's really important early on when when some type of obsessive thought starts to being the hamster in the cage mm-hmm. in your mind, you need to recognize that and come against it in the name of Jesus. And we'll be talking about some other things you can do. But as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So I like that what you said to Joyce Meyer. Think about what you think about. Mm-hmm. Where is the thought that you're dwelling on? Where is that thought going to lead you? Where will you end up if you follow that thought through to an action? Uh or you could even say, what is the enemy trying to convince me to believe if I follow this thought? Mm-hmm. Something very bad's going to happen to me. Something very terrible is going to happen to me. I'm going to get this sickness or I'm going to, you know. And we're not saying not to be cautious or to use common sense or be wise, but the enemy will take things to extremes. Mm-hmm. He loves extremes. And uh, what would you say about someone who's just really struggling with like a obsessive compulsive type thoughts that are just coming unrelentingly. And I know that's hard to encapsulate yeah, because kinda... you are you are a counselor <laughs> and it can take a that could be multifaceted. Yeah, yes, so I don't understand know if we can really give a good answer. But just that, but just it, generally speaking, what should they do? Well, they're gonna have to really become um Guarded over their thoughts and replacing those with truth. Confess that to someone else is a good step. You know, talking to someone else about what what those irrational thoughts and obsessive thoughts are. Mm-hmm. And um, wow, we could just go on for that yes. a long time. I don't. You know, I think sometimes it's demonic when you're having obsessive thoughts, yes. for sure, because the enemy likes to stick things like that. And you, see, and you see that in in, in the scripture. Uh, with the man among the tombs, you know, that was just uh, rage-filled. And uh, yes, the mind can be overtaken by the demonic. Uh, and he's called the prince of darkness. So when per- when a person becomes saddled with uh, death-filled thoughts, and even sometimes suicidal thoughts, and obviously there can be chemical issues mm-hmm. going on in a person's life, there can be other things, but there can also be doors that have been opened to the demonic because he is a thief who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm-hmm. And so that's very serious, and uh, they need to be dealt with seriously. And sometimes people may need to call for help. Yeah, but t- tonight we're mostly just talking about yeah. the kind of anxiety that all of us can have yes. and how that can lead us to depression if we don't mm. it's good to do cl- something about that. Yeah, Good to clarify that, that there's different levels, but all of us have to get pummeled with thoughts that we know if we grab hold of and hold mm-hmm. on to them that there's not going to be healthy. Like I say, don't let that, yeah. uh, you don't have to let that bird build a nest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 it's like that old adage about uh, I, um, um, the, the guy at the watermelon patch, he said, I may not keep my mouth from watering, but I sure can run, you know. Not, not steal it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, so the first thing is realize, you know, you need to use your power of choice. God made you that way and choose life. Uh, ch- choose what you're going to think of. Secondly, focus on the promises and not the problems. That's a, that's a real simple, practical thing, but it's so biblical. It's very powerful. 
you know, you can, even in the middle of all what's going on today, you know, it's important to, let's say someone today wakes up and they're healthy, but they're afraid of being sick. Uh, they don't have, you know, may not even have been exposed in any mm -hmm. way, but their fear is tormenting them or their anxious thoughts or they're f afraid for other people. So they could turn that into uh, certainly getting the promises of God and praying those and confessing those and also being thankful, like saying, thank you, Lord, I'm, for my health and the health of my family and that I'm and breathing today and walking and healthy and you, you know you're guarding around me and since your angelic help and protection and and just rehearsing all the times he's been faithful and taking care of you and your family and so kind of pushing back against that um, pro focusing on the problem yeah because you can get into that uh, prophesying negatively over yourself mm -hmm. like this is a terrible day it's not going to get any better you know it just goes from bad to worse and uh, it's just not going to amount to anything, and you know I'm probably going to get sick again, and I'm going to, and you just end up you're you're really prophesying mm. over yourself, you know, because your what your words you speak are powerful. An enemy, he's deceiver and he's a seducer, and so if he can get us dating some of these thoughts, mm -hmm. next thing you know you'll marry one of them and you'll start having babies, mm -hmm. and you're going to have a whole head full of trouble then. And so it's important to focus on the promises and not the problem. Magnify the promise. Don't magnify the problem. Uh, uh, focus on love, not hate. Focus on generosity, not greed. Mm -hmm. uh, focus on, uh, you know, uh, light, not darkness, and so forth. It's, uh, Philippians 4 8 gives us a good list of things mm -hmm. whatsoever lovely, praiseworthy, virtuous, good mm -hmm. report, and so forth. Those are the things we're to think on. Uh, so choose to think on those things and focus on the promise, not the problem. When you see a problem, ask yourself, what's the promise that overcomes this problem? There will be a scripture that you'll use in some way. For instance, if you start feeling down and a little de depressed, anxiety in the heart causes depression. But a good word makes the heart glad. Well, I'm going to start speaking some good words, you know. And, and that can... Well, we'll talk about yeah. that in a minute. I won't go there yet. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a good a good word makes the, the heart glad. So get a word Sometimes from the word. It's a word good. from the word for yourself. And yes. a lot of times then even sowing that, that law of sowing yeah. and reaping. Decide who else you could text or call uh, mm -hmm. to offer them a word of life, a word of encouragement. Yeah. And that does so much for your own soul when you give that away. Absolutely. And that's the third thing that we wanted to share with you is to move offensively by encouraging someone else. In other words, be active. Come against get on the, the offense. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, don't become offended, but get on the <laughs> offense and move against those negative thoughts like trying to get me depressed and think about how all the problems that I have. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rise up move through those and uh, find somebody that may be struggling like I am, and I'm going to encourage them. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how that begins to shift your thinking and your focus and your mentality. Uh, it's part of what Jesus taught us to deny ourselves and follow him. Well, he was a servant, so we deny ourselves, serve someone else, and that enlivens us and helps mm -hmm. us get out of the doldrums. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And some people struggle with this more than other people. And these are just simple practical things to help any of us to kind of stay out of that ditch of depression, of those depressing thoughts, of just having a down day. You yeah, know. and some people, um, you know, if we think of body, soul, spirit, there are different reasons people are depressed. And so sometimes... You know, if it's not just your thoughts, you might have some health issues you have yeah. to deal with. Your vitamin D might be low and mm -hmm. blah, 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 on and on goes. But uh, anyway, we do need yeah. to move toward helping others and encouraging others and uh, being on the offense. Yeah, instead just, of just speaking life over someone else mm -hmm. awakens life within yourself. That's right. And uh, we've all had that experience before, maybe 
when the enemy is trying to discourage you a little bit. And does somebody, you always say like out of nowhere, but really it's the Lord moving. And they just say, hey, I just want to tell you, I appreciate you. Thank you. You've, God's used you to bless me. Or I see, I see the Lord just using you in this way. Or you're such a... Uh, a strong person in this, in this, I, you know, I admire mm-hmm. this quality, and it, it begins to awaken you. You know, uh, the Pulls scripture you up out of the ditch. Yes, uh, the word of God can do that. Uh, the, the Proverbs also says, "A word fitly spoken, right time, right place, in the right way. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver." Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful picture, and we can do that with our words. So, so if you're starting to feel down, then try to build someone else by, by sharing a good word with them because a good word mm-hmm. makes the heart, the heart glad. It will help them, and it will help you. And by sowing to them, somebody you're going to reap by somebody sowing into you. That's, That's right. just the way it works. That's right. What's something else? Choose to speak the truth regardless of what the facts may appear to be. Yeah. So you might could use the example, um, you know, things are difficult. The kids aren't getting to go back to school, and, and that's a fact. That's that a fact. you could flip that around and say, uh, God is going to use this season for something good in our mm. family. And he's... Uh, you know, bringing good out of a difficult situation and he's breaking our family closer together and he's, you know, mm. just we can look for the silver lining. Silver in lining in the dark clouds. Absolutely. But that's true. We know that he's going to work all things together for good to those who love him. So mm. if a season, if a lot of things appear not mm. to be good, you can still bank on the fact God's going to bring something good out mm. of it. And you're not saying, thank you, God, for causing these problems. You're saying, God, thank you that you're bigger than these problems. And that's so important for us to have that kind of faith-filled perspective that no matter what we face or no matter what we go through, that God can handle this. Yes. And he can handle, he'll, because he can handle that, he's got us. And uh, that's so important. So choose Choose to speak, the, the, realize that the truth is greater than the facts. Sometimes the fact is, you know, this is this, this, this difficult for people right now. Uh, they're struggling, but the truth is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens Sometimes me. Sometimes the fact might be there's no money in the bank account, but the mm-hmm. truth is God is my provider. Yeah. Fact is you can't walk on water. Scientifically, you cannot. But the truth is, Jesus actually did walk on water, and so did Peter. The fact is, an axe head can't float. It goes against the laws of nature. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, God can move on it and cause it to rise to the surface and float. He did it. So in that sense, truth triumphs over facts. It And that's uh, even we're talking about healing. The fact is you may be battling a disease. And we're not asking you to deny the no, no, fact. No, no, no. I'm not saying that you deny the fact. But the truth is, by his stripes, you are healed. Mm. And so that's where you, 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 you see what's factual, but you embrace what's true. And we all know that we can be fooled by what appears. And I, I stated mm-hmm. that what may appear to be. Mm-hmm. You know, what the facts may appear to be. Sometimes we actually get the facts wrong. And so um, that's good. Now, last thing before we have our time of communion is don't be fooled by your feelings. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Don't be fooled by your feelings. I remember in the early days of becoming a believer, we've used this illustration in discipling people about uh, living the Christian life. The, uh, uh, looking at it like trains on a, a train cars on a track, mm-hmm. and where's the feelings go? Not the caboose. The feelings are the caboose of the train. You put them back there. You don't let them lead you. Why? Because uh, well, you know you might wake up in the morning and not even feel saved. <laughs> but does that mean you're not saved? No, you just may not feel saved. You may not feel mm-hmm. like you want to go to work. But are you going to go to work? You may not feel like being loving to your spouse. Are you going to be or not? So you don't need to be led by your feelings. Thank God for feelings. Yeah, and hear what God's yeah. saying through your feelings. Yes. I mean, if you're, if you're in an ant bed, thank God you can feel the sting or you, you, you'd be eating up and not know it, <laughs> you know? So don't follow feelings. Uh, the, the, lo- the, the, the locomotive should be the, called faith. 
We live by, we walk by faith, That's live right. by faith, not That's by right. sight. We're not moved by what we feel, even see or hear, but what God's word says, that's how we're to live our lives. Your, your feelings can taint everything you see mm-hmm. and everything you hear. True. Very true. Yeah, and I've got some uncomfortable stories about how you size situations up and think this is happening, and when you realize what's really happening, you realize, wow. And I, I've learned that early on in preaching because somebody may be sitting back there and you're preaching. <laughs> And if you just gauge in the nap, you think, man, is he mad at me or is she mad at me? Or what, did I say something I shouldn't have said? Or wow, what's going on here? And then, and then you know, after the service, they come up to you and you think, oh, me, they're about to unload on me, take you by the hand. Preacher, thank you. You don't know how much I needed that word from God today. So I learned early on, you, you better be careful trying to read what you think is going on in somebody's life. Don't be, don't follow those feelings around. They'll get you in more trouble than you can get out of. <laughs> Walk by faith and not by sight. You know, so um, neither are, are we saying that you live with your head in the sand and just deny everything going on around you, or you don't want to live your head in the sewer, try to bury yourself and everything that's going on and not deal with your real life, uh, but live with your head in the scripture. And so then you can, you can have discernment and know what you should do. You've got somebody smarter than you are to tell you what to do when you follow the Scripture and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Anything else you want to add to that? No, I think that's a Just a few good things. reminder for us. Yeah, just more some practical reminders, a um, little checkup from the neck up <laughs> to deal with those depressing thoughts because the enemy wants to push us down. There's a term in Scripture about being weighed down, mm-hmm. and that's the idea of being under pressure. You know, depressed means that there's some pressures coming against you and trying to deflate you, to push mm-hmm. you down. And uh, that, that's the enemy. You know, let your faith in the Holy Spirit and the Word of God uh, lift, lift you. you up. And the way we experience this is by lifting Him up. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you all for that. Hey, Randy, how are you? Blessings, brother. Thank you for joining us. And we appreciate so much. And Lauren, God bless you. And Daniel, um, we just speak blessings over all of you that have dropped by to be with us tonight and uh, pray that God blesses you, energizes you by his Holy Spirit. And let's, let's just have a time of communion now. Let's do that. Yeah. If you have your, your bread available and your cup, if you'll take the bread now. Lord, would you just bless this time that we enter into the place of oneness as your bride, as your body? acknowledging your lordship, honoring your death, your burial, your resurrection. You are our life, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the sinless life you lived and that you gave your body on that cross for us. As we hold this bread, we remember your body given. We remember you're you're the bread that came down from heaven. You satisfy our hunger, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. You give us life. Thank you for your death on the cross, your glorious resurrection. Thank you that in your body you bore our sins and that God raised you from the dead. Now you have a glorified body. Thank you for the hope and promise that we have in you and your finished work. Would you worship him now by eating the bread with me? take the cup. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your blood shed for us, how we worship you for your precious um, cleansing blood through which our sins are atoned for. Thank you for your sacrifice, Lord Jesus. Thank you for just making a way for our sins to be forgiven. Mm -hmm sacrificing yourself for us and how we love you and praise you for that. Now take the cup. Amen. Well, he is worthy. Uh, As you have opportunity, 
share his goodness with others. Uh, and if you can think of someone who may be down, struggling a little bit, think of a good word that you can speak into their life. And if you personally are struggling, we just pray tonight, we just speak his good word over you, that you are loved, that God's plans for you are good, and he has not forgotten you. And if you do, do not know him, here's some really good news. You can call on his name and he'll save you. And I tell you, this is the best decision you'll ever make. So I pray that you know God's love and I pray that it would ever increase in your life and that you would grow to know more and more who he is and who you are in him. We'll see you here tomorrow at 1030 a.m. Yeah. in the morning. Yeah, and we're teaching on the kingdom. We're talking about cultivating a kingdom heart. And today we talked about the church and the kingdom and uh, and, and some neat stuff. And tomorrow we got more. So God bless you. Have a great evening. See you soon. Love you much.